Greetings, flesh wound horror freaks, and welcome to our Vinegar Syndrome special. I am Daniel Shine, joined tonight by producer Todd Moya. What's up? How are you doing tonight, Dan? I'm doing good, feeling good. I uh, can't complain. Uh, so we're going to be talking Vinegar Syndrome, I think our, our favorite company. So I'm eager to get right into it uh, with our first one, which I know has been requested a long time it seems to me, on different uh, forums, and it's finally coming to Blu-ray, and that is Rush Week, which is a 1989 slasher from director Bob Browver. And in this one, Tony Daniels is an ambitious young journalist working for her college newspaper. Tired of covering the same boring stories as, his, as her peers, Tony becomes intrigued by the recent disappearances of several female students and believes that they may be linked to an on-campus murder that happened the previous year during the college's ruckus rush week. Despite being certain that something terrible has been happening on campus, no, but no one she talks to is willing to admit that the disappearances are cause for concern. Undeterred, Tori decides to investigate the mystery on her own, but before long finds herself becoming embroiled in a twist-filled saga of deeply buried and bloody secrets which attract the attention of a sadistic killer who will stop at nothing to hide the truth. Uh, one of the last films to emerge out of the 80s slasher's heyday, acclaimed stuntman Bob, Bob Browver's Rush Week is making its debut on Blu-ray. Uh, all right, so Rush Week. I hadn't watched this in a long time. I always really loved this movie. Uh, it was a staple for me ever since I think I saw it the first time actually on USA Up All Night, which um, was uh, obviously really important to me. I, I guess was it kind of important to you, Todd? You're a little older. I know. I oh, there was there was quite a few. I like. It's a weird one because I wasn't a fan of watching cut stuff, but I'd use it to like, I've never heard of, oh, I think it was getting lucky. Tremolator put it out on DVD. Oh, yeah. I think that one I discovered on the, I, well, I know that one I discovered on there. So there was a few times I'd like catch part of something and like watch them and like, okay, I got to mm -hmm. find this. And that was one that escaped me for years, but yeah. Yeah. Not as important. I think for, for me, same with like the original run of Joe Bob, because I wasn't about watching cut things. That I already had. It was always a way for me to discover something and then well, track yeah. it down in a lot of places. So um I get no, and I get the importance of that. That's what Joe Bob does now. I mean, for me, there was a lot of stuff I discovered because of Elvira. Um, there was still some stuff. I mean, I'm a fango kid, so I was finding out that before stuff hit, you know, USA and TBS and stuff. So yeah, no, definitely. I was Fangoria was always number one in terms of my horror reference guide uh, pre-internet. Uh, but so anyway, Rush Week. So this one's uh, this one's unusual in a lot of ways because there's a lot of slasher elements that you don't get. Almost every kill uh, until the very end actually is kind of bloodless. They cut away from everything. So it's not one that's going to necessarily satisfy the gore hounds. But if you have an affinity for kind of some of those goofy mid to late 80s slashers where, I mean, yes, the quality went down. But honestly, a lot of those movies were a lot of fun. Like I yeah. kind of compare this to like a slaughter high for me. Not a good movie, but it's a fun movie. I have a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, I, I was thinking of stuff like the later stuff, like Phantom of the Ritz was another one. That oh, was yeah. a later one. There's there's that little like end of tail end of the era where there's a lot of like little cool stuff. Yeah, but, we're just going to have fun with it and not take it too seriously but, sort of deal. But a lot of it like this, it kind of gets uh, forgotten about and everyone's like focused on the 80s. I think it's kind of nice. now. I mean, technically, this is 80s, but it's very tail end. Um, I want to say it didn't actually come out on home video till 90. 90 um, in the U.S., yeah. Okay, yeah. So uh, that's why I always think it 90s when it comes to this. Um, but I, it's good, like, you have Vinegar Syndrome and a few other companies now. They're kind of, like, showing love to that, that 90s era that has been kind of just forgotten about. A so, lot of it, yeah. Actually, I mean, with another film, too, we'll be talking about later. Yeah. But um, So... Yeah, off-screen kills, but you know what this has going for it is it's basically almost like a Porky's Animal House kind of 
sex comedy for a good portion of it. I mean, some of the hazing things they do, like with the the hooker uh, banging the corpse. <laughs> I I'm sorry, that's hilarious. No. <laughs> Maybe not everybody's gonna think so, but uh, it, it cracked me up. Uh, we get Greg uh, Allman of the Allman Brothers playing Cosmo, the school, the like forty something year old school newspaper editor. This movie is just a smile. You're you got a smile on your face the whole thing. And although it doesn't have gore, it makes up for it in gratuitous '80s slasher nudity because there is a lot of it in this one. I think that's going to be a theme tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, this one's funny. Uh, I, I also cracked up that uh, Dominic Braschia is playing a character called yeah. the Peeper. Uh, <laughs> life imitating art on that one. Yeah, uh, made, made me feel <laughs> skeevy watching it. <sighs> but I still watch Friday the 13th Part 5, so I can't like say anything. <laughs> there you go. We also get the beautiful Kathleen uh, Kinmont, uh, who is uh, always... Uh, very cops. nice to look at Halloween and uh, cops do it by the book. If you want to. Yes. Oh, wait, wait. I think I just figured out our next shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was going to say Halloween for Bride Reanimator. She doesn't get enough uh, love. I mean, I know people really like her, but I don't it, know. Her name's not. It was, it was funny. I'll, I'll tell you a Fango story. I felt bad for um, Lorenzo Lamas. He was surrounded by his ex-wives. He had her on one side and Shauna Sands on the other. So. <laughs> <sighs> I, I, he seemed to be so cool with them both, but that's... Uh. He, he's... Yeah, I'll, a story for another time about Lorenzo Lamas. But, um, uh, so yeah, I mean, guys, this one, don't expect the prowler don't expect oh, the burning or you know any kind of slasher classic but if you just want a, a good time yeah you probably know who the killer is and again not a lot of gore um you know it's funny it, it i didn't realize the the lack of gore because i was so into thing at the beginning i was like you know what i think by the third i was like we haven't really had any blood but eh, whatever <laughs> if you're a slasher fan though that doesn't like uh, a lot of the sex comedies, then you might have a problem with this one to be quite honest, but you know, people, that was a lot of people's issue with hostile too. If you remember, cause yeah. They, they, yeah. Yeah. I, love that too, but. <laughs> I mean, the last maybe 15, 20 minutes that this really kind of goes full slasher. Truthfully, this but. is one I'd be really interested to see how it went on like a slash Tober. See how, you know, far it went. It, I, I mean, it could go further than you think. Just because I know we haven't, fun. we haven't, yeah, we haven't really done stuff. We were, I don't know. Maybe we'll throw that, throw that one. Who, who knows? Whatever we do, the next one. There's no pacing issues for me with this one. While no. like there's some slasher movies, yeah, there's some smattering of gore, but some of them have some pretty bad pacing issues when you go. But back I, and look at I them. think they're following the rule of boobs or blood every X amount of minutes. They just went a little bit more with the boobs over the blood. <laughs> They did. They did. Uh, so, uh, uh, real quick on the extras, we get uh, So 80s, a Court Courtney Gebert interview. Uh, that was uh, a nice little listen, kind of goes over her career, and they joke about some of the technology <laughs> in this and uh, her 90s TV work and what she's doing today. We also get, and that runs. Uh, 13 minutes, roughly. We also get uh, a Dean Hamilton interview, which ru also runs uh, approximately 13 minutes. He talks his early soap opera work and uh, moving on in his career to do directing and producing more after this. He just kind of uh, left and his, his wife pops up. And let's just say he's a very lucky man. Uh, and finally... We also get a commentary track from the Hysteria Continues, very informative, uh, and they they kind of go over it, this film's history, its release history, uh, USA Up All Night, and all of that. Uh, very informative. Uh, so, movie for me, I reviewing it for what it is, and that is definitely sex comedy blend <laughs> sort of thing. I have a freaking ball with this and I give it a four. Uh, not everybody's going to think the same. Like I said, if you don't love the sex comedy, 
comedies of the 80s, you're going to have issues. Um, extras, I give a five. I, I couldn't really ask for much more. This How about one, you, Todd? I'm 100% with you. I'm a four. Um, but I, again, like you, I also love the sex comedies. Um, extras, yeah, absolutely wonderful as usual. Transfer is beautiful, which we need to mention. Um, never thought we'd see this in high definition. So that's a bonus. Um, I recommend it. Yeah, absolutely. If if you're having a bad day, this is just a good one. I I watched it and I was just, you know, I was just exhausted from some shit I was doing that day. And I was just like, this put a smile on my face. So, <laughs> so check it out. Um, uh, all right. So next we're going to move on to another one uh, that Todd had mentioned is kind of a time period that's getting a lot of love now on Blu-ray, particularly through Vinegar Syndrome. And that is the 1995 film Last Gasp from director Scott McGinnis. And in this one, Leslie Chase will do anything it takes to push through this mega real estate development, even if it includes arranging the massacre of a Mexican native tribe to clear a patch of land. Uh, but no bad deed goes unpunished as after the murder, after murdering the tribe's chief in cold blood, Leslie's body and mind are taken over by the chief's vengeful spirit. Forced into committing a series of heinous murders, Leslie's life is thrown into greater peril when a de private detective who has been hired to investigate the disappearance of one of his victims begins to suspect that the elusive real estate tycoon is harboring a deadly secret. Uh, an intriguing mix of supernatural possession horror and straightforward slasher, complemented by several bloody set pieces. Uh, and uh, this is this underseen piece of direct to video horror is on Blu ray for the first time, newly restored in 4K. Uh, all right. So, last gasp. Uh, this one, it, it, I had forgotten about it. I have seen this. I used to have it on VHS. Um, and, uh, didn't really remember it a lot. So I, I'll, I'll pitch it like this. Uh, you get uh, Robert Patrick, the T-1000, uh, in, in, as a possessed, uh, <laughs> you know, Indian, uh, no, not Indian, uh, Mexican uh, tribal leader going around killing people. And it sounds fun. Uh, is it as fun as that premise? Not quite for me. Um, although I still I still have fun with this. Uh, watching it again, uh, number one, Robert Patrick is a fantastic actor and uh, still very busy today. A lot of TV work. Uh, maybe, you know, post-Terminator 2, maybe not the, the best career decision. <laughs> uh, I can only imagine what the pitch was like for this one. Uh, it also has uh, Joanna Pacula who I'm a big fan of uh, from a uh, 80s horror, another actually late 80s horror film called The Kiss, uh, one I'm looking for, uh, hopefully, uh, at some point to get a, a good release. Uh, really enjoyed her. This is just a mishmash of everything. I mean, at it, it, certain points, it almost feels like an erotic thriller. Um, Robert Patrick, actually, uh, somewhat graphic love scene for... <laughs> You know, a notable name. I was a little surprised. There's some uh, suckling you, going on. <laughs> you want to see the T-1000 getting down? <laughs> there you go. That should, there you go. You want to see T-1000? <laughs> Fuck. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it does deliver some some decent gore here and there. This one's kind of an oddity, really. Um, it's never particularly scary or suspenseful. Uh, yet it doesn't like quite get into camp territory either. This is just a, this is a strange one. What did you think, Todd? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm with you on this one. It, it is, it is a weird one. It kind of doesn't know which genre it is or it, the genres are kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know me, I also love erotic thrillers too. Um, not my favorite of the bunch. I'll be honest. Um, it looks great. Um, that's my positives. Um, yeah, I, it's, I have a hard time knowing who to recommend this to. Well, while it was entertaining enough, it's one of those where I don't know, like, 
Dan, you might like this. That's about like as far as like I'm not gonna recommend this one to Kruger. Maybe even Pugs I'd be kind of on the fence about. No, I mean, other than the T1000 getting up in those guts, that's about uh, <laughs> that, which I, I did. I was like, oh, shit, I don't remember that from the uh, the VHS, him uh, you know, very vigorously uh, banging a girl. But wow. uh, but even some of that, like, yeah, there's nudity, but there's not like even for erotic thriller standards, not softcore bump and grind, but just erotic thriller standards. There's not like enough of that, too, where I'm like, it works more I, as an erotic thriller. I think if you like weird, just out there, like cinema, that's a little different. I think that's yeah. who I'd recommend this to. I mean, honestly, the vinegar syndrome crowd um, is a good market for this. Cause it is, it does. It feels on brand. Yeah. You know, it, it's certainly not boring. I mean, it moves along at a brisk pace. Uh, it just, it doesn't, it, it's not going to kick your ass, but I'm very happy that I have this. Nonetheless, it's, you know, like I said, it is for the most part entertaining. I like the cast. Robert Pac Patrick and Joanna Pacula are uh, amazing. And uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and rate this one. Uh, I'm a two and a half. Uh, I am happy I have this. It's just not one, you know, that you're going to watch over and over again. I'm a little higher. I'm a three. Um, okay. So, but what about the extras? Uh, the extras, uh, we get uh, some outtakes, and that's about it on this one. I'm sure Robert Patrick maybe not too eager to, to come what? in. Uh, but uh, he doesn't want to talk about getting in them guts. <laughs> no, no. It's probably, a, I think he's married now, so he might not want to like get in trouble with the wife and reminisce about that uh, <laughs> vaguely, so vaguely uh, softcore uh shenanigans in the possessed uh tribal chief movie mm. <laughs> so, all right so, <laughs> so that's last gasp uh moving on to our final film of the evening uh which is <clears throat> one that uh has been out before on dvd but is new to vinegar syndrome blu-ray and that is the 1977 Kung Fu Grindhouse flick uh, directed by Robert Warmflash. Uh, and in this one, the residents of a dilapidated New York tenement building are being harassed and threatened by Iguana Realty, the dummy corporation which owns the land uh, in an effort to force them out of their homes. But when karate master Charlie's father is murdered by a group of thugs hired by the landlords, he decides to take matters into his own hands. Enlisting the help of his best friend and fellow fighter, Speedy, and driven by desire for vengeance, they soon develop a plan to murder each board member of Iguana Realty. However, what they don't realize is that, is that their final target is someone much closer to home. A genre-blending grindhouse classic that perfectly embodies the mid-70s New York city lensed exploitation film aesthetic, uh, Death Promise oozes sublime 70s sleaze from beginning to end. Uh, all right. So Death Promise. Um, so this one I, I, I have seen before. I had the uh, previous DVD. Um, and uh, this one's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> this one is, is a lot of fun. It's very, it's low budget, but I, I just had a blast. There's just crazy shit from beginning to end uh, from the, extremely uh 70s wardrobe to uh some of the stars uh that are that are just hilarious um the lead that plays uh, uh charles uh bonet who plays uh charlie the lead uh is uh bruce lee he ain't <laughs> uh, but uh, some of the some of the just the noises during the the kung fu scenes are <laughs> especially even in the a-list kung fu, fu films they are uh pretty out there but this one i don't know there were some moments where i was just like what the hell are you doing right now is that supposed to be intimidating me i love the score uh just the funky opening score was just really cool um yes are you gonna get the best fight scenes in the world no <laughs> does it look a little cheap at times yes 
Uh, is there a, one point where it kind of looked like a fake mustache was being blown off in the wind? Yes, <laughs> but it all kind of adds up to just a good time. Um, the way they kill some of the uh, some of the villains in this are are pretty creative one involves rats one involves a poisoning uh and uh it's a little ed woodish uh, once in a while in terms of some of its production values but you know uh i didn't have an issue with it it's kind of like a chop sucky death wish map up uh, uh, mock up and i yeah i had a really good time with it how about you todd yeah i'm with you except this is actually the first time i've seen it and it definitely has that New York vibe era, you know, like yeah. the, the the tenement era, which was a few years after. But I, I had that that East Coast East Coast vibe. I actually really like it. I thought it was really funny. Um, if some unintentional, um, it was just a, a a good piece of grindhouse cinema. I mean, we don't get stuff like this anymore. And and yeah, I think you nailed it on this one. It, it's it, it's clever definitely, kills yeah clever kills yeah yeah i i had a really good time with it and uh, every once in a while i kind of it's weird from this period even some of the like quote-unquote shitty action movies yeah. some of them are fun or more fun than their big budget counterparts at the time yeah. uh this one just hit again smile on my face the entire time it's never looked better uh vinegar syndrome is always uh has done an amazing job i like that like every like goon in this movie like is like a, a mustachioed menace <laughs> <laughs> they were all pretty much rocking that look um and uh like i said not always maybe the best choreographed fight scenes but uh i've certainly seen worse i see worse mm-hmm. today quite frankly uh and i had a i had a blast with it i really did um so uh the movie well first real quick just to uh i should highlight the extras first before i rate it uh we do get nine thousand feet in 90 minutes an interview with the ed- editor jim markovic uh which is very informative we had a lot of good information on that one and uh, uh so all right so movie i am a three and a half uh, I had a lot of fun with this. If you if you like these sort of New York grindhouse flicks uh, of the time, you'll you'll have fun too. How about you, Todd? Um, yeah, I'm three and a half. That, that's fair. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, all right, guys, uh, we're looking forward to what Vinegar Syndrome has coming out next. I know their yeah. uh, their next package is. Uh, I'll tell you right now. Really cool. I'll tell you right now what's coming in the. The next, um, this, well, technically it'll be this, this month. We have Homegrown Horrors, Volume 1, All American Murder with Christopher Walken. We have Grave oh, yeah. Secrets, and then Kevin Tenney's The Cellar, which um, I'm looking forward to. And, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, guys, be sure, and we really, really appreciate this because it does help quite a bit. Uh, to like, share, and subscribe, but most importantly, also hit that notification bell uh, so you know when we're going live. Uh, also, fleshwoundfeatures.com and patreon.com slash fleshwoundfeatures, where we have new, early, original, uncensored content, and there's a ton of exclusive content uh, that's going to be going up on there uh, in the coming months. Also, uh teespring.com slash stores slash flesh slash wound slash features uh where you can buy some merch now some of it's going fast uh so about the teespring store uh which if you are uh watching of course on on youtube you can see some of the shirts right now uh for you audio listeners uh you definitely want to go there and check it out uh some of the shirts will be very limited so some yes. may only be up for a few days at some point, and we'll yeah. Patreon members will get an exclusive early look at that. So it pays to get on the Patreon. It only starts at a buck. So yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I, I can't wait for next month. This was another fun batch from Vinegar Syndrome. Um, yeah, I think we Absolutely. we nailed it all. <laughs> 
there you go. Uh, so, all right, guys. Good night. Good and tag. I'll shine.